I invite you right now to recall a very important, a very valuable lesson that you carry in your life, that you follow in your life all the time. Maybe it is about honesty, maybe faith, maybe trust in God, maybe value for life, maybe value for your parents. These are important lessons we carry. But my next question is, when did you learn it? When did you learn this important lesson in your life? When did you start to appreciate that this lesson is so important that if you will not live by this lesson, you are not going to live happily from now on? When? When did you learn it? Did we learn our most important lessons in life when we were bemedaled? When we were most popular? When uh, we graduated valedictorian? When we graduated summa cum laude? When we passed the board exams? When? When did you learn your most important lessons in life? When you got your master's? When you got your doctorate and your name was on the tarpaulin in the neighborhood congratulating you? Was that the moment when you learned your most important lesson? Most likely, my dear brothers and sisters, the answer will be no. Because as life goes on, we start to understand that the most important lessons in life we learn when we are most humiliated, when we are most problematic, when we are most forgotten, when we are most ridiculed, when we are most threatened, when we are at the brink of death. And then the lesson comes to us and then we carry the lesson for the rest of our lives. What I'm trying to say, my dear brothers and sisters, is there are many lessons you can learn from cloud nine. But the most important lessons you can learn when you are at the bottom of the pit. There are many lessons you can learn when you are champion. But the best lessons in life you will learn when you are defeated. There are many lessons in life you will learn when you are most popular. But the most important lessons in life you will remember when you were forgotten, when you were ignored, when you were suspected. There are many events in our lives that teach us beautiful lessons. But the most important lessons in our lives, come to think of it, were taught to us when we were most down when we were most sick, when we were most hurting, when you lied and you were exposed, you remember the lesson of telling the truth. When you were sentenced, guilty, and you were sent to jail, now you remember the value of freedom. When you got sick, and you were almost considered as dead, and you were given three months to live, six months to live, or three days to live, and yet you survived, those moments are teaching moments. When we are at the brink of death, when we are most threatened, when we are poorest, when we suffer the most, when the pain is most deep, that is when we learn the most important lessons in life. And this brings me to my message to you, my dear brothers and sisters. Today, in memory of St. John Paul II, and with the spirit of the Military Order of Malta, we celebrate World Day of the Sick. But what is the value of sickness? What is the value of our brothers and sisters in our church? If you are new in the church, 
you might think that the teachers, that, that, that the poor, the sick, are our beneficiaries. They are recipients of our food. They are recipients of our medical care. They are recipients of our money. They are recipients of our sympathy. But today, on the World Day of the Sick, the church teaches us and proclaims loud and clear that the sick are our teachers. The persons with disabilities are our masters. And the poor and the poor are our lords. The poor are our lords. The sick are our lords. The handicapped are our lords. And if until now you do not understand it, you are quite far from the kingdom of God. The most important lessons in life we learn when we are most sick, when we are in jail, when we are humiliated, when we are publicly rebuked, when we are ridiculed. Those lessons we don't easily forget because those lessons are the lessons that will carry us through. For the past 100 years, the world has been living in health. And last year, this worldwide pandemic hit us by surprise, like a thunderbolt. We were unprepared for the lockdowns. We were so afraid of the virus. We were afraid of getting fever. But believe me, my dear brothers and sisters, although the past year, the past 11, 12 months have been years, have been months of anxiety, of stress, of depression for all of us, believe me, there is a lesson to be learned. Until now, we are still trying to survive. When that time comes, when we are able to thrive, we can look back at COVID-19. We can look back at those who got sick. We can look back at those who died. And we will be able to say, thank you for teaching us the lessons of this sickness. There is a secret inside COVID-19. And it is not to be seen by the microscope. It is not the subject of research of scientists. The secret of COVID-19 you can only discover if your eyes are the eyes of the Lord and if your heart is the heart of the Lord. That is the secret. There is a strong connection between a deep problem and a deep lesson. But not all deep problems teach us deep lessons because some of our deep problems have resulted in deep bitterness. Where lies the difference? I will tell, I will explain it to you by a story. Michael is the only son of a widowed mother and he was five years old, poor. When he was about to go to school, the mother brought him to school the first day and his classmates had yayas, had nannies to accompany their, his classmates to school. When he came home, Michael said, Nanay, can I also get a yaya to bring me to school? And the mother said, we are poor. We cannot afford. 
you just ask Jesus to bring you to school every day and Jesus will fetch you every day also. I am sure Jesus will take care of you. And so it happened. Every day he would ask Jesus and Jesus would appear, wait, and bring him home. It was the teacher's birthday and everybody had a gift and Michael had none. So Michael said, Mom, can I get a gift from my teacher? You just ask Jesus. So Jesus gave Michael a pitcher of milk to give to his teacher. When we got to school, the others had apples, the others had flowers and chocolates, the others had gadgets. Michael had milk. Happy birthday, teacher. And the classmates laughed. Milk! Michael thinks our teacher is a baby. He was so hurt, but the teacher left it on the table, not minding it. Michael started to cry, and the teacher said, Transfer the milk to another pitcher and return the pitcher to Michael. So it was transferred. But as they transferred to one pitcher, the pitcher that originally carried the milk had more milk. Eight, ten pitchers had been filled and there was still milk coming from the pitcher. And the teacher said, Michael, where did you get the milk? And Michael said, from Jesus. Where is Jesus? Outside the door waiting for me to go home. So they went out. Jesus was not there. And Michael said, Jesus, my teacher wants to meet you. No, Jesus. And the class was laughing. Ha, 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 ha. Liar, liar, liar. No, Jesus. It was now Michael's turn to cry. The teacher left. The classmates left. And while bowed down, Jesus appeared. And Jesus said, I'm here. And Michael said, I was calling you earlier. You did not come. Now they are gone. They won't believe me. And Jesus said to Michael, Michael, I am always here. You can return to your teacher and say to your teacher, Teacher, Jesus told me that if your heart will be as pure as my heart, you will see me also. Teacher, if my heart is as pure as your heart, you will see Jesus also. There lies the difference. How come people become saints with sickness? And how come people get bitter with sickness? The answer is purity of heart. The microscope can show us the virus, but purity of heart can show us the lessons. There are lessons that we can learn from cloud nine, but the most beautiful lessons we can learn in the darkness of the pit, in the darkness of the night. If your heart is pure, you will understand sickness is a blessing. The sick are our treasures. The weak are our masters. And the poor are our lords. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Please look for Father Sok on YouTube and I hope you can subscribe to the channel. There I can meet you with more reflections, with more homilies 
and then we can interact. And you can also tell me the questions in your heart, the questions in your mind, which I hope I can also answer in the same channel. It is not technology that brings us together. It is the Lord. It is not technology that has brought us together. It is our love for the Lord and our love for the church. May the Spirit continue to work in all of us. God bless you.